you want to get a turn around in the in the in your mind you don't have peace you don't have rest you don't have happiness you don't have joy you want to turn it around i tell you my friend you can get what you want the stand fast love ministry of the word of god was very important why it is because they believed that they need to tell the people what god is saying what god's will is and what god wants what's god desire is for them that's why they preach and once they tell it then people will begin to stand in the midst of their problems take these words and begin to speak them in the midst of their problems and in that way they ought to live their christian life so you got to get the word across the word must go into the people they must understand it then they must begin to use it therefore the preacher has to dedicate himself for the task so that the word gets across effectively to them as soon as it was done the bible says the word increased exactly those words the word of god increased and the number of disciples multiplied what a connection today preachers are so worried about the number but when the word increases the number multiplies that's the healthiest way to grow a church church must grow not because we have got some designs and plans and 
we've got some methods to make it grow. It must grow because the word increased. Word increased means what? It increased in the lives of people, in the hearts of people. It went into them. The knowledge of the word of God, the will of God began to increase. People have began to live by faith. People began to overcome their problems. People are beginning to take the victory. The word increased means uh, is referring to the impact and the influence that the word of God had upon their lives. The difference that the word of God was making in their lives and how they are now using the word of God to win their victories in life. Now in Acts chapter 19, which I'm going to read right now, 19 verse 20, it says, So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Grew mightily and prevailed. That means the word of God so mightily, that is, it uh, really uh, increased in this mighty way. What mighty way? I showed you how 50,000 pieces of silver worth books on magical arts were brought and burned. And I showed you the value of what 50,000 pieces of silver meant. One piece of silver is one day's average wage of a man. So 50,000 means 136 years of wages. Nobody's going to live and work for 136 years. So you can calculate it like this. It's one year wage of 136 people. That's how much worth the books were. What, is, what it is showing is that the word has made such an impact, such a marvelous transformation that these people didn't go and sell those books, didn't go to the Moore market and get some price for it. They took it and burnt it because they didn't want this to spread. They, didn't, they believed wrong. They've gone after these things and wasted their time and money and effort on these things. They don't believe these things. And uh, so they want to completely burn and get rid of them. There is a marvelous transformation. They're burning things that don't belong to their life. Putting away things, getting rid of things from their lives that they do not want and do not see uh, fit in their lives. That's the message there. Now, that is why it says, so mightily the word of God grew and overcame or prevailed. So mightily it, uh, the word of the Lord grew and prevailed. The word of God is a prevailing word. And I want to show you how it prevails. That's where we stopped last week. So let's go on. How does the word prevail? How does the word prevail over your problems? How does the word prevail over your wrong beliefs and get you into the right kind of thinking and right kind of ways and right kind of thinking? See, that's the problem. A lot of people's problem is they've got wrong kind of thinking, therefore they go in the wrong kind of way. Their life is wrong because the thinking is wrong. How do you go from the wrong kind of thinking, wrong ways to the right kind of ways? Through the word of God. The word must prevail. You must hear the word, get in, the word must get in, and it must prevail over those things because some traditions and some beliefs and practices are embedded in us. We've done it ever since we were little. This is the way we believe. This is the way we've been. You know, and it's not very easy to change. You cannot just tell a person, do this, uh, you know, don't do this from tomorrow, you know, because he's been doing it uh, ever since he has had any kind of sense, you know. And he thinks that's the right way. His thinking must change, then his ways will change. How does it happen? The word is the thing that comes and prevails. How does the word prevail over our problems and difficulties? How does the word prevail in a home where there is no peace, where there is strife, where there is separation, where there is disharmony? How does a word prevail in the midst of diseases and sicknesses? Word, how does the word prevail over poverty, lack, insufficiency, want, always living under debt, always having a tough time, just even having our basic needs met? How does the word prevail? How does the word help you to overcome these things and, and prevail over these things? The word is a prevailing word. It helps you to prevail over these things that are prevailing over you. So how does it prevail? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Let me read to you from verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And look at the result. See, it's, first it's telling about how our ways and our thoughts are different from God's thoughts. Then it talks about how our ways and thoughts are changed by the word of God coming into our lives as the rain and, and the snow, snow comes and waters the earth and brings forth and makes the earth to produce So it says the word is like that. It comes into our hearts and it makes the heart to produce good things, the things that God desires. And then it says, then you shall go out with joy. Verse 12, this is the result. You shall go out with joy, be led, forth, uh, led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands Look at that. There's a total change. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. What is thorn? Thorn is a sign of poverty, financial troubles. Because when... The curse entered into the world. God spoke to Adam and said, your life is going to be difficult now because it's not going to be easy. You'll eat out of the sweat of your brow. That means uh, it's, the going is going to get tough because it's not going to be easy working now. Why? Because thorns and thistles will grow out of the ground, which, it, which was not growing before. Now you, you'll be busy cutting the thorns and thistles. They will try to choke out everything that you planted. They will try to work against everything that you are trying to do. There is an opposing force called the curse that is at work. So thorns shall come up, uh, the instead of thorns shall come up the, the cypress tree. So it's talking about how when the word of God comes, things are going to change in every way. You're going to become glad and happy and joyful and, this, and, and all the strife and sorrow and tension is going to go. Blessings are going to come. That's the way it is expressed here. But let's look at it wholly, this whole passage. It begins with, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. But read verse 7. Sometimes the context is so important. Later on you can read from verse 1 itself when you have time. But just let me point out the, con the context and the contrast between six, uh, 7 and, and the rest of the verses. Let the wicked forsake his way. See the way, the idea of way and thoughts begin right here. And so verse 8 is a continuation of that. He's been saying something about the wicked people and why they are like that, why they are such failures. And then it talks about how they may change. They may see a change in their lives. How they may bring about a change in their lives. He said, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts, see the way and the thoughts are already here. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So the problem with the wicked man is the ways, his ways and his thoughts. And then it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your, nor are your ways my way, says the Lord. How do we change it? If that's the problem, if a person needs a total overall, total change and turn around in his life, completely change the situation so that all the wrong things in his life will go out and something new will happen, a transformation will take place, a new life will come about. What must happen, he says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there and water the earth and make it 
bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth in other words he says just like the rain and the dew comes from this from heaven and waters the earth this is the language the people would have understood very well because the promised land that the that god brought these people of israel to see god is speaking this to the people of israel the covenant people the promised land to which he brought them is a very special land it's a land flowing with milk and honey but flowing with milk and honey because of god's blessings not because of anything else because of god's blessings because egypt was a very well developed place it was a it had the river nile running through it it watered everything there no problem irrigation was no problem they had this great river flowing with water so there was always grain so there was always prosperity there and uh, the area called mesopotamia uh, in that uh, in in that region that mesopotamia had uh, the rivers like tigris and euphrates and uh, they fed their agricultural lands through that and they irrigated their lands through that so there was no problem but the promised land the land flowing with milk and honey the land of canaan was different it had no river source for water it had uh, none of these things available every day they just have to look up to heaven and hope it rains if it doesn't rain they're finished if it doesn't rain this year it's over they'll be having famine if god does not send rain nothing is going to work out god purposely brought them there to show them that he will open the windows of heaven pour out a blessing upon them that they will have no room to contain that is why in the bible you read so much about the rain coming down so on even in deuteronomy 28 when he talk about the blessings god says the lord shall open unto you his good treasure what treasure is talking about open unto you his good treasure it says and pour out rain in due season upon your land have you ever read that the rain and the source of the rain which is heavens is looked as a treasure house god is not going to throw money from there or gold from there or whatever you need from there he is going to throw rain from there because rain when it comes down will fix all the problems the land will grow your crops will be successful when the rain comes when the dew comes and the, when the rain comes your life will become different you'll become prosperous because when the rain comes praise god everything is going to grow fine so people looked up for the rain waited for the rain thankful to god for the rain they realized the grace of god every day every month every year they had to depend on god's grace look up to god trust in god they can't trust in nile they can't trust in euphrates or tigris or any any of those rivers they have to trust in god and god has something bigger than the nile up there he can just pour it from heaven just turn it on and sprinkle it all over your farm you know you don't have to make a way for that it will just come and fall on your head and on your farm and it never runs out so these people understood these words very well when when the prophet spoke this and said as the and and said as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and water the earth look at the language and bring forth and make it bring forth i like that and make it bring forth what the water does is see he, after saying this he says so is my word in other words he's saying my word is like that water that comes from heaven just like when rain comes down it's going to fix all your problems solve all your difficulties you're going to have prosperity you're going to have grain you're going to have food to eat you will not have famine all your difficulties will be solved i will give rain the source of rain is me i'm here i guarantee you rain just like i give you rain and cause your land to become a land flowing with milk and honey just imagine the lands around them must have looked at them in amazement they should have said we got rivers we got all the source of water everything you know pakka but these guys are more prosperous than us 
because god is more pakka than these guys god god is god has got it all perfectly worked out it's a land flowing with milk and honey so now he says as the rain and dew comes down my word comes down what does the rain and dew do when the rain and dew comes it waters the earth and make it bring forth now this is what i would i would really big put a big circle on in my bible make it bring forth make it bring forth which means which means when the rain and dew comes it forces the earth to produce literally it forces the earth to produce similarly when the word of god comes when the word of god comes in what kind of situation does the word of god come the world is under a curse good things don't happen just like that that's why you can't just sit around and hope nice things will happen if you sit around wait for nice things to happen only bad things will happen some people say i left it all to god well if a man had a 100 acre farm and said i leave it all to god he will have only thorns and thistles to eat it will grow nothing but thorns and thistles what does he do first of all he comes up with a desire of what to plant what kind of crop he wants to raise what will be the most profitable for him what will make his life better so he decides desires something and decides to raise something right he makes a decision having a land is not enough you got to make a decision what do you want to raise going to put coconut trees there mango trees there banana what are you going to raise you going to raise rice or some kind of vegetable product you got to make a decision decide on something what is your desire what do you want to raise so he goes according to his desire and then goes to the shop and gets the seeds for that particular thing that he wants to raise he can raise exactly what he wants he can get what he wants i hope you get what i'm talking about he can get what he wants he goes and gets the seed and comes home and begins to prepare the land to sow the seed he cultivates the land pulls out the, all the rocks and the stones and stuff that are a hindrance for the crop to grow cleans up the place plows the land or cleans up the place and gets the land ready to sow and sows that seed that he has brought then continually waters it and does whatever he needs to do after that pulling out the thorns and thistles and make keeping it very clear so that it will be conducive for growth and the success of the crop he does every day some work to make sure that everything is fine so that he gets what he wants in the end does he get what he wants yes he gets what he wants now the language implies here that that's how the word of god works you want something good to happen as a christian you want good things to happen in your life you want to change your life you want to turn your life around you want to turn your situation in your home in your family you want to turn your situation in your finances in the work of your hands where you're not seeing success maybe right now where you're experiencing only failure you want to get a turn around in the in the in your mind you don't have peace you don't have rest you don't have happiness you don't have joy you want to turn it around i tell you my friend you can get what you want Amen. Keep clapping your hands. I'm reaching for the prize. I'm giving everything. I give my life for this. It's what I live for. Nothing will keep me from all that you have for me. You hold my head up high. I live for you. Greater is He that's living in me than He that is in the world. Faith, I can move the mountain. I can do all things through Christ.
reaching for the prize I'm giving everything I give my life for this It's what I live for Nothing will keep me from All that you have for me You hold my head up high I live for you Greater is he That's living in me Than he that is in the world Faith I can move the mountain I can do all things to Christ Surprise. 